Whether you're fly fishing here in the Parklands region of Southwest Manitoba, or any lake across North America for that matter, you're probably gonna need access to watercraft. That could be a pontoon boat, float tube, small pram, or a big boat like I have here. In addition to your basic safety equipment, I'd like to walk you around my boat, show you some of the features I've incorporated. Perhaps you can use them into your watercraft as well and make your day on the water just that much more enjoyable. First of all, I love to fish in an anchored position. Find it comfortable, relaxing, great control of my presentations. You need anchor systems. And on this big boat, we need fore and aft anchor systems. This is a removal anchor system. It slides into the bracket here. I put the pin in, it's locked in place. It's extended, so the anchor, when I'm moving from point A to point B, it's not gonna clang and bang and accidentally hit the bow. It's got a nice cleat in here, so when I get the anchor in position, I just lock it in, it's gonna hold. I don't have to lose time or patience struggling to tie it off somewhere. As I move to the upper deck, I've carpeted it, indoor, outdoor carpeting. This muffles the sound and it protects your fly lines and things like that. If you drop them, you're not gonna step on them and grind them into the aluminum. So let's talk about the midsection. Not a lot here, but I've got two removable seats, so you can sit up in the center section in comfort if you perhaps don't want to sit up in the bow section. And I've got carpet down here, again, muffles noise, protects fly lines from standing on them, and this carpet's removable, so if it gets dirty, muddy, I can just remove the seats, pick the carpet up, take it out, give it a shake, hose it off, or conceivably you could leave it in there and just give it a quick vacuum. It just depends on how dirty it is. So here we are at the stern of the boat. There's a lot of things going on here. I want to show you some of the features. I've got a carpeted upper deck, again, for noise reduction, uh, re reducing the risk of grinding your fly line if it accidentally gets underfoot. Using stainless steel screws, I've bolted down a, um, or screwed down a, a yardstick. I can use this to measure fish, leaders, anytime I need a ruler for anything. I've used some three quarter inch plywood, put a rubber coating on it. This covers the uh, open area here at the back underneath. I've got my starting battery, my outboard motor uh, gas tank, and two batteries uh, for my electric motor. Most of the trout lakes tend to be small, so an electric motor is a constant companion. I've got a 55 pound thrust motor. I recommend getting the biggest, powerfulest motor you can. Uh, wind, you've got numbers of people in there. 55 pound is as big as you can go in a 12 volt system. It's bolted to the stern. I've got some carpeting down here simply to protect the boat. Not all of the lakes I fly fish are small and nor do I chase trout all the time. I love chasing walleye, pike, other species on the fly. A lot of times they're in big lakes. A big economical four stroke like this helps me get around. If the wind gets up and safety's an issue, I can get off the water quickly. So let's talk about my rear anchor system, my electronics. First of all, electronics, got my sounder head installed. So it's out of the way of fly lines, connected to my power source, which is my battery underneath my uh, cover, and then the transducer cable. I'm using uh, a unique, um, transducer mount that is magnetic, earth magnet. So I don't have to drill holes below the water line. And it just simply, I tuck it up out of the way when I'm towing and I turn the wing nut, drop it down. So the sounder, um, the, sorry, the transducer is just below the water line of the boat. So I get a good reading, but it's not sticking way down. So if I run with the big motor, I'm making a rooster tail. The rear anchor system is a removable anchor lock. It just clicks in. It's got a dog system. I can raise this anchor one-handed if I have to, should a fish get near the anchor rope, I'm worried about losing that monster to the anchor rope, I can just pull it up out of the way. And when I'm lowering it, it'll just drop down, lock into position. I don't, again, I don't have to tie the anchor off. I move around with my anchors deployed for quick and easy anchoring. And at the end of the day, remove the, uh, the mount itself, stow it away, off we go. Day is done, anchors are put away neat and tidy. So there's my boat. It's clean, it's efficient, not a lot of things for fly lines to catch on to. It works very well for me. Hopefully you can use some of these to adapt to your watercraft, some of these ideas to adapt to your watercraft for a more enjoyable time on the water. Just anchored up here. I've got a nice bed of toolies that the fish should be cruising in front of and along. I've anchored the boat with the wind at my back, the anchor ropes trailing out behind for a good purchase. And of course, when we catch a fish, always an optimist, um, that fish is gonna be hopefully battled out here and not going to get into the rope. So that's what we wanna do. We're just gonna to cast towards the toolies. We're in about six feet of water, going into probably five feet. So I've chosen a floating line, 12 foot leader, single balanced fly, in this case a balanced leech. 
not two flies because we're shallow. Two flies sink faster than one, and there's weeds in there. So when I hook a fish, or if we hook a fish, there's a risk that second fly hanging up and breaking off the potential trophy. That's the plan, that's the strategy. So let's give it a try. There we go, right at the boat. I was just about to consider raising the rod up to hang, just a slow rod raise to induce a take at the end of the retrieve, and he whacked it a millisecond before I thought to do it. This, well, this is dogging down, it's a brown trout, I think. And we're, oh yeah, it's a nice, nice brown trout. So we're just using these balanced leeches with a floating line. I'm in about six feet of water, casting towards uh, the cattails along the shoreline. Fish at this time of the year, that's the, that's the supermarket. That's where the food are, and balanced flies are an excellent choice, especially cast and retrieve. Looks to be a female, nice fat female. Of course, the males at this time of the year are beautifully colored as well. She's got that balanced leech right in the snout. Balanced leeches, balanced minnows, balanced damsels, balanced scuds, all creatures of the shallows, and just the kind of fodder these Beautiful fish are starting to chop feet up on, so I can probably just grab the leader here. Take one last admiring look. Look at the colors on that fish. Wow. Parklands region of southwest Manitoba. Unbelievable public stillwater fisheries here. All season long. Just a great place. Balance flies are the way to go. Wow. I'm going to keep doing that all afternoon, I think. The Parklands region offers a beautiful setting to cast a fly. It seems there's always something spectacular to look at between fish. In addition, from a tactical perspective, it's important to maintain a constant watch for moving fish so you can react to them. Both of these actions, however, take your eyes off the indicator. It is as though fish have periscope vision and know to pounce at that exact moment when you aren't watching your indicator. Fortunately, a trout ate my balanced leech with such gusto that I was able to react in time. Looks like a good fish. I turned my eyes away just for a second. Noticed my indicator wasn't under and decided, well, I better raise my rod. This is my reward. Like a, not quite true, oh, it's like a nice rainbow. Beautiful fish. These balanced flies, if you ever have the chance, to meet Jerry McBride, be sure to thank him for this balanced fly philosophy. It, is a, it has had a big impact on how I tie flies and 